Hello, people. How are you guys doing today? Uh, this is July 3rd. Wow. Uh, one day before the fourth day of the Independence Day, uh, July 4th, Independence Day. Uh, wow. I'm just like, uh, I was up all night to pretty much uh, looking at a lot of material. I'm kind of catching up from when I went on my Florida vacation. I'm trying to really catch up with videos and watching things I haven't had time to watch. Um, I just want to uh, do a holler out to uh, my brother, Mr. Hargrove. I thank you so much for all your material you've been sending me uh, and all your support to the ministry as well and others out there supporting us as well. Uh, talking to a lady over in uh, Uganda this morning, uh, we was just talking about the goodness of the Lord and all the things going on. And, you know, I, me and her were just talking a little bit, but, you know, it's really true. A lot of people just really still hung up on this world, hung up on this world, okay? Yeshua will tell us, love not the things in the world. Uh, you know, we're in the world, but not of the world. Uh, you know, and he's trying to let us know that this day, you know, he said that heaven and earth will pass away, but my uh, word would never pass away. But, you know, we get hung up on this world. You know, we get hung up on trying to be popular. We want to have uh, all these goals in mind to reach to have these cars and these houses and what all this stuff that people want, lands or who, you name it. Uh, and I know it's nothing wrong with uh, living, you know, you have to do your living, day-to-day -day living, and Yahweh expect us to take care of our families and all of those things. But sometimes I think we overdo things, people. This is what I mean. We overdo things. We need to be trying to be content with what we have. And uh, like I say, taking care of the poor, the uh, homeless, the motherless, the fatherless, the orphans, uh, doing those things that you sure told us to do, go into all the world. And I know people say, well, money, you know, you got to have money. You got to have money. You got to have money. Yeah, we got to have money. We will have money. God will provide and take care of his children. And like uh, I was talking to another sister this weekend from California, and she's on a ministry out there, a women's ministry. And we just had a long conversation. And she was talking about the same thing, that how if we would only do what Yeshua called us to do and not no more, no less, he will take care of his people. He will take care of his people. But do we really trust him, trust him to believe that we would take care of him? He would take care of us. So uh, today, uh, my message is going to be a pretty serious message. Like always, I try to have serious messages, but God gave me... Um, Yeshua gave me this message this morning. The Holy Spirit gave me this message this morning. Reaching the height of Christian perfection uh, on page 226 from Maranatha, the Lord is coming. And I'm going to be also reading some quotes from uh, Randall Brewer, uh, Your Full Potential. I had started out reading it uh, on some other videos, but I'm going to continue reading it to finish this up, finish some of it up, okay? Uh, so anyway, I, I really just want to, uh, just let you guys know that, yeah, we do, we should be working on, a, working on our full potential for Yeshua HaMashiach, for his purpose only, because, you know, um, these things in this world is just temporary people. You see every day things are going on. I just reading about yesterday, the World Trade Center, uh, had an evacuation because of a, Somebody had threatened with a bomb or something like that. I heard they cleared it out yesterday at 4.30 in the afternoon. Uh, I have two links I post down below about it, but they had all these pictures on one of the links where, boy, that's a big building. And they had a like a pathway of people, you know, all through the building. And, and they had to evacuate people. But they cleared it out. Thank God for that. We all went into prayer over it yesterday. Uh, some of us, uh, one girl had already had a dream of something Friday that it was going to happen. This was going to occur. Um, and then the Common Sense Show has got a video on, uh, pretty like a patriotic video, talking about America, talking about all the stuff going on right now, uh, some of the things that have happened, some of the things going on uh, right now with, you know, with America, with the world, whatever. So I will post it down below if you want to take a look at it. And I will put some other news updates down about Yellowstone. I know we, it's people saying Yellowstone, we're sitting on a time bomb with Yellowstone. And like I said, if it ever go up, we're out of here because it's so close to us as well uh, here in Colorado. 
uh, I think it's coming from Leak Project, and he's talking about Yellowstone ticking time bomb, 37 billion acres of magma, magma. And so they were just talking about how all this, uh, most of the United States is covered in ash, uh, all these things leaking out, you know, we got all kind of things going on and we got war th threats coming. Uh, one of my old men, gentlemen over in, uh, Israel, I'm not going to, I may post it down. I don't know, but I have to see it first, but he's talking about the things going on about Daniel eight and things coming. And I know a lot of prophetic things are going to be taking place more than ever. They're already taking place, but more than ever, they're going to be uh, escalating. You know, they're going to be just climbing higher and higher. The birth pain is going to get bigger and bigger, people. So we need to be praying without ceasing, doing what we can while we can. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I was up last night singing a little song and I'm probably going to sing two verses of it. Cause I just, this is my 4th of July song. I really feel this way about it because nothing else matters to me, but Yeshua coming again, you know, because we are getting so wrapped up into all these things. Everybody need a job. A lot of people out there need jobs right now. And I'm praying for Yeshua to bring jobs, but people, I got bad news for you and good news, but I'm telling you. I just don't think America's going to hold on too much longer. I don't think we're going to have jobs. I know Sears have just laid up and uh, shut a lot of more stores. J.C. Penney shutting stores all across the country. Uh, every time I read somebody's going out of business, I just don't know. I, I just know that we are bankrupt from what everybody is saying. And so I know I, I got a lot of links to post down below about uh, the collapse is coming, uh, coming from XX2 report and uh, other people reports and uh, it's just going to be a lot going on. So I'm saying the best uh, security that you have is in Yeshua HaMashiach. No other security. Uh, peace, they're not going to make peace, people. Uh, they can tell us what all they want to tell us on the media, on the TV, on whatever. But we're not going to have any peace. The only peace is in Yeshua HaMashiach. Giving your life to him right now today. Uh, and he will come inside of you and sup with you and use you and give you your purpose. Okay. Because that's what it's about. It's not about, uh, getting great again. It's not about having, uh, uh, everybody have, uh, big checks coming again and jobs. And we are just lucky if we get a job, you know, we have to really pray to Yeshua to lead us to whatever job you may ha want to have right now, because the world is really, going down, going down, going down. Okay. And they can tell you whatever they want to tell you. They can tell you the real estate market is increasing and they can tell you all these lies people, but we need to really know that soon and very soon, um, uh, the bomb is going to drop. Okay. As a lot of people out there who have wisdom are saying the same thing. Okay. If you have wisdom, um, so let me see if I could sing two stanzas of the, my favorite song. And this is my 4th of July song, because I feel this way. I really did. Last night I was up singing this song, and I was like, oh, my goodness. I never knew how wonderful that song is. And it has about five, five stanzas, but I'm not going to sing but two. And I probably sing um, the first one and the last stanza, okay? But um, if you got your old hymn books, you should take them out and go look up Lift Up the Trumpet by Jesse Strout. Uh, and see uh, how wonderful that song is because sometimes I don't hear it very often anymore. Okay. Father, sing with me, Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Lift up the trumpet and loud let it ring. Jesus is coming again. Cheer up ye privilegums, be joyful and sing. Jesus is coming again, coming again, coming again. Jesus is coming again. Nations are angry, by this we do know. Jesus is coming again. Knowledge increases, men run to and fro. Jesus is coming again, coming again, coming again. Yeshua is coming again. 
So I just want to sing two stanzas of that, but that's such a wonderful song. Echo is hilltops, proclaim it ye plains. Jesus is coming again. Coming in glory, the lamb that was slain. Jesus is coming again. Coming again, coming again, Jesus is coming again. Sound it, O ocean, in each mighty wave. Jesus is coming again. Break on the sands of the shores that you laugh. Jesus is coming again, coming again. Heaven of earth, tell the vast wandering throng. Jesus is coming again. Tempest and whirlwinds, the anthem prolong. Jesus is coming again. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I just love that song. That's my anthem for the day because I'm. that's where my heart is at, people. We should be getting ready to meet our king, getting ready to meet Yeshua HaMashiach. It's the only thing that really matters, people, the only thing that really matters. Uh, so let's go here now and read um, for Maranatha, the Lord is coming. Then I'm going to get down to read some things in closing with uh, Randall Brewer. Uh, so it says here, and uh, Mary not the Lord is coming on 226, reaching the height, reaching the height of Christian perfection. So this is what she says here. Well, this is Ephesians 3.20 first. Ephesians 3.20 says, Now and to him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Ephesians 3.20, the power that worketh in us. Hallelujah. That's why I say you have to ask for this power. You have to plead the blood of Jesus over yourself. You have to uh, rebuke these, uh, the, rebuke the devourer, uh, the enemy, Satan himself. Like I say, I always rebuking him, always telling him to get behind me, always telling him, uh, you know, uh, just get out of the way. You, you don't have a future. So, you know, we need to be always praying without ceasing people. So it says here, if you make God your strength, if you make God your strength, you may under the most discouraging circumstances attain a height and breadth of Christian perfection, which you hardly think it possible to reach. Your thoughts may be elevated. You may have noble aspirations. Clear, perfect, clear perceptions of truth and purposes of action, which shall raise you above all sordid motives. And sordid motives mean, uh, tell me what sordid motives mean, husband. Evil, evil motives, okay? That word sodith mean evil motives, okay? So, uh, you know, God can raise us above all these these evil thinking ways and and uh just all the things that we do to our bodies and like a lot of young people today now they putting uh, all these uh what tattoos on themselves coloring themselves up and then i see ladies with whole arms of, of tattoos on and men too and i'm like what's the purpose of that people what is the purpose of that Yeshua got in a scripture where he don't really, do, really, he's not really pleased with that. Okay. If you go and really look in some of the scriptures, I, I don't have the text here with me now, but I know I read it in scripture in the old Testament. Okay. But it said both thought and action will be necessary. If you would attain to perfection of character, he cared more about the character than anything else, anything while brought in contact with the world. You should be on your God that you do not seek too ardently for the applause of men and live for their opinion. Hallelujah. Living for people's opinions. Got to be in the crowd. Got to be with the popular ones. Got Oh, I got to do this. I got to do that. I, oh, I want to be in this group. I want to be in this uh this uh, sports entertainment, whatever you want to do. But you know, Yeshua is calling his children back to the Torah, back to him people. And you know, all these things going to pass away. It's going to pass away. So why should we put all our energy and money and time into the world so much? I, I really been just sitting here pondering over that last night, late last night. I just don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't. And I know all of us are guilty of it, okay? I've had my whirly moments too. I wanted to be a, a singer one time when I was 19. I wanted to sing in the world. I wanted to, I had an opportunity where I was singing with the Commodores. I could have been singing with the Commodores. And then my, my husband, who I was married to at the time, said, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. So he kind of broke that up. But I'm glad he broke it up when I think about it today. I'm glad he broke it up. 
I'm glad Yeshua allowed him to break it up because you know, this world don't have nothing to offer me, nothing. You know, and all these people trying to get into the in crowd, going to Hollywood, they want to be a star. They want, you know, we need to just really reconsider what we're doing and think about our character and thinking about perfecting ourselves for Yeshua and working for his purpose, people. Okay, so it says here, um, it says here, um, I'm on here, okay. cultivate, cultivate the grace of humility and hang your helpless souls upon Christ upon Christ in the midst of confusion and temptation in the worldly crowd, you may with perfect sweetness, keep the independence of the soul. If you are in daily communion with God, you will learn to place his estimate upon men and the obligations resting upon you to bless suffering. Humanity will meet with a willing response. You are not your own. Did you hear that sentence? You are not your own. We were bought with a price, people. Absolutely, a high price, a real high price. So he says here, she says here, you are not your own. Your Lord has sacred claims upon your supreme affections and the very highest services of your life. He has a right to use you. You hear that? He has a right to use you in your body and in your spirit to the fullest extent of your capability to the fullest extent of your capabilities for his own honor and glory. Do you understand? For his own honor and glory. You think he, he made us for himself, people. He didn't make us for ourselves. You know, I, 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 me, me, me. Oh, what I want. What Marnie want to do. What, oh, what my husband want to do. What, whatever I want to do. We supposed to be working for his purpose, people. That's why you're supposed to go to him and seek his face and give your life to him completely where he can show you where he would have you to go, what he would have you to do, okay? So it says here, uh, whatever crosses you may be required to bear, you are to accept without a murmur, accept without a murmur. Many are without God and without hope in the world. They are guilty, corrupt, degraded, enslaved by Satan's devices. Hallelujah on that. Yet these are the ones whom Christ came from heaven to redeem. They are subjects for tender rest, pity, sympathy, and tireless effort. For they are on the verge of ruin. They are on the verge of ruin. You know, I was listening to uh, Benjamin Fairclough's sermon yesterday and how he's talking about how he was an uh, alcoholic and he, he, you know, he, and he don't even want to, he don't want to have nothing to do with alcohol. He was just saying in his sermon how he didn't even want to have uh, cooking wine and his food anymore. It's true, people. You know, you get so sick of this stuff in your life. You know, you get so sick of it. Like I said, you get so sick of this worldly music that's not benefiting you anything. I'm just getting your emotions all built up. You know, all the love songs, all the songs that talk about, oh, you left me one night and all these things. It all it make you think about is wanting to go out and kill somebody or, or slap somebody or hurt somebody. And, you know, we need to be just focusing on cheerful things, on positive things, on things that's going to benefit our soul, people. And that's why when I get in my car, I just want to hear my music. I just want to hear my messianic music and songs that's going to uplift me, you know. I think I was playing one today by, uh, uh, I can't call that man now, Hebrew, um, new, new breed, new breed, new breed. And it's the one about long life. You know, you would give me long life. And, you know, we need to be playing songs that's going to just like keep us lifted up in the spirit of God. Because this world going to beat us in. If we just let the world take a, a part of us, it will beat us to death. Satan will just get rid of you people. He came to kill, steal, and destroy. So we have to always be clinging to the Savior. Always clinging to the Savior. So it says here, um, they are miserable. Look what it says here. They suffer from ungratified desires disordered passions. Like I just said, all these passions in the music, the songs today, all this stuff about passion, about hatred. That's all it's talking about to get you all riled up. You know, Satan used to be one of the highest angels in music in heaven, you know? So he know how to get songs to rile you up, to get you all mad and upset and committing suicide and all these things that people listen to these songs. I remember in high school, I used to listen to these songs, some of these love songs, and we used to come home 
and walking home from school, we playing these little, little uh, transistor radios. We playing all these songs and 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 getting all upset and getting all crazy. You know, it, it nothing new under the sun. We did it too. And I'm just saying, you know, but today we need to be coming out of these things, coming out, separating ourselves from the world. Because all it do is what he said here, ungratified desires, disordered passions, and the condemnation of their own consciousness. They are miserable in every sense of the word. Hallelujah. Miserable. Want to get mad and angry and go out and drink, go out and dope and smoke and pot and, and then, you know, you get all angry and then you want to kill somebody, shoot somebody. That's why we got all these shootings going on. We don't have any self-respect. We don't have any self uh Control is the word self-control. We do not have self-control today. People do not have self-control today. They just want to hurry up and get it over with. Hurry up and kill somebody. Hurry up and do whatever, you know? And Yeshua want us to have perfected characters, people. Perfected characters. So it says here, um, I, I, it's true. They are miserable in every sense of the word. For they are losing their hold on this life and have no prospect for the life to come. No prospect for the life to come. You have an important field of labor and you should be active and vigilant, rendering, cheerful and unqualified obedience to the master's calls. Hallelujah. So that's coming from Ellen G. White. I love it so much, people. We need to be really focusing on keeping ourselves together in Christ, keeping ourselves together in Christ. And I just love what this says. Keep calm and stay centered. And that's what we need to be doing, staying centered. What do it say on the back here? 